the calibration and setup video for the Waylog 3030 is going to be separated between calibration and setup. Today we're going to talk about the setup. First thing that you would do is once the unit is powered up, shown the loop logo as you've seen, you press the menu key and at this point we want to go into the factory settings just that one we want to enter our password which is 4084 passcode hit the green arrow the the setup menu comes up with a quote quote full setup but below that are in uh, are all of the individual setups as well uh, for the uh, for the time being though we are going to enter into the full setup that will lead us through all the various and the sundry uh, sensor setups and English uh, or language setup and at this point we're just going to tell it that we want to do that it asks us if we want to load it from the USB and the the answer to that question is no for this particular one so it will ask us to choose our language obviously we've chosen English we have uh, our choice of only three languages in this particular unit it will also ask us what our weighing units want to be it can either be tons or pounds in this particular case it's set to tons we're just going to leave it at that it asks us if we have multiple attachments if we're going to use the target load whether or not we want to use the bucket count and you can see in this particular case we've told it that we do not should we turn the customers on they are on and the products are on as well uh, again, if you wish to make any changes, you simply uh, make the change as you see necessary by switching that off, and that would switch the switch the products to having an X there, which would switch that off. I'm going to turn the products back on. So at this point, this is the way that we would like it configured. So we move on. It also asks us whether, what kind of data logging options we might want to use, whether we want to use an S, the SD slot, a USB port, or a printer. And in this case, we don't have any uh, external device hooked up to this, so we're just going to leave it alone. Uh, at some later date here, we'll be addressing the data and printer uh, setup and mechanisms that you can use to get the data off of this particular unit. It also asks us to go into the sensor setup and at this point we are it asks us whether or not we're going to use a reference and direction sensor and we are in fact doing that. In this particular position it asks us what kind of pressure sensor configuration we have and if we double click this if we have a P1 sensor that would be the current configuration of this particular unit when run on a simulator we have only one pressure sensor and that pressure sensor is located in the lift cylinder pressure line if we have P1 plus P2 that would mean we would have a pressure sensor in the pressure line and one in the return P1, C1, and C2 are specifically for uh, telehandlers where we put pressure sensors in the compensation cylinder. And again, P1 plus P2 plus C1 plus C2 is likewise for a telehandler where we would be putting pressure sensors in the compensation cylinder. Well, I'm going to switch this back to P1 only being that's the way the simulator uh, gives us our, our weights for this particular one. If you have two pressure sensors, do not forget to switch this to P1 plus P2 so that you will use this, the pressure sensor in the return line of the lift cylinder. 
It also asks us about the RAM ratio. Uh, 1.30 is the default default setting there. There are several other settings on here that frankly are uh, quite technical in nature where the calibration allows us to set some of these uh, in here and some of these will turn on uh, such as the proportional scaling and the speed comp will turn on when we're set to P1 plus P2 and we do a full calibration. So at this point uh, we're done in the sensor setup. If you have any questions concerning compensations, static filters and what have you, please consult your manual. This also allows us to configure attachments. We can tell it that we have a bucket weighing in dynamic, we have a fork weighing in dynamic, this says grabber, this says muck grab, this says pallet, uh, but we have several choices of attachments, 10 in fact, that we can in fact select. Uh, we can also name them, edit them in this particular uh, area. We can change whether or not they weigh in dynamic or static as well. So uh, again, this would be a place where you might want to consult the manual on adding more attachments to this particular configuration. The enable auto add is just what it says when the bucket, forks, or whatever we're using to lift uh, the load width comes up, it would automatically add as long as we're on. If you wish for that to be off, you would simply select the X and that would mean that you would be using the remote inner switch each time that you lifted the load. The overload, uh, that can be enabled as well. Uh, this is an alarm. It's set for a level percentage. Uh, this may be a useful function in some situations, but not uh, that many here uh, that, that have to do with loading trucks. This, the brightness can be set as you go through here. Uh, again, these are available in the regular menus as well, but you would set the brightness. You would also be able to set the volume and then you would be able to select the instrument ID as well. After that, we have the hour. This is in 24 hour time, minute, year, month, and day. Once you've uh, gone through the configuration, the complete one, it will ask you if you want to restart. Simply press the green key and the unit will restart. And the initial setup at this point would be done.